Hello fellow gardeners, welcome back to Wild Woodland Lavender Farm. My name is Carrie. This is the fourth installment of my seed stash series. I'm just going through all the seeds that I've had in my stash and now that I actually have a big enough piece of land to plant stuff and a greenhouse to start seeds in, uh, I finally get to use up some of these seeds. Some of them are pretty old and I don't even know if they're viable anymore but we're going to give it a try and see. So I've done three other videos on all of the different kinds of veggie seeds that I have. Today's video is going to be mostly flower seeds that I have and herb seeds and a few other. I was out shopping yesterday and I was realizing that I didn't have any cucumber seeds. I was going through all the all the seeds pack seed packs that I've that I have, you know, all of these all of these and I was realizing I don't have any cucumber seeds and um, I need pickling cucumbers and I need cutting cucumbers so uh, I had to get some cucumber seeds and then as I was also looking at the cucumber seeds when I was at Cascade Farm uh, I realized I also didn't have any green bean seeds so I, I have a bunch of other well I think I have one kind but I need a lot of green bean seeds so I picked up a few others that looked interesting to me. So I just want to show those real quick before we get on to the the herbs and the flowers. So first of all I got a pickling cucumber. Uh, usually I like Boston pickling and there was another kind that I used for a while too. I also like to grow lemon cucumbers for pickling but I didn't get any seeds this year so uh, we'll just do without the fun little yellow pickles. <laughs> um, so this is the Heirloom National Pickling Cucumber. It's by Cornucopia. Just a random uh, seed company that's at um, Cascade Farm. High yielding, dependable producer with resistance to scab, tolerance to cucumber, mosaic, medium green, straight sided fruits for making crispy pickles. Uh, then for a cut it slicing cucumber, I'm trying this point set. Poinsett 76. Uh, there we go. Again by the Cornucopia. So the average is 8 to 9 inches long, 60 to 65 days to harvest. So I don't personally like cucumbers myself. To me the only good cucumber is a pickled cucumber, but the rest of my family, well, part of my family likes cucumbers for eating fresh and in salads and whatnot. All right, so here are, oh, and I also was noticing I didn't have any cauliflower seeds, so I got some of that, just a Amazing Taste Cauliflower by Renee's Garden. So we'll see how that goes. Then I got Bush Bean Castendel, the weekend bean, also by Renee's Garden. They look nice and straight. They keep their juicy texture and sweet flavor longer on the plants, leaving you more time to pick them before they come tough or fibrous. That's a good thing, because sometimes I don't get to them right away. This one looked fun. Um, it's three colors, three color blend of juicy succulent beans, and there's gold, purple, and green. And I thought those would be fun to have growing in the garden. Tender, stringless, and juicy, the gold royal purple and deep green crunchy pods will cook up sweet and tender. So those will be fun to have in the garden. All right, to the flowers. I got a Hopi black dye sunflower because they're purple. <laughs> And uh, you can use them for making a dye with, a natural dye. So I thought um, I'd like to be able to try that. The, you can dye cotton wool, use it for bas basketry. And it'd be interesting to see if I could use it in soap making as well. Um, another sunflower, mammoth gray striped. Can produce 10 foot plants with heads that average 12 feet across. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 12 inches. <laughs> That'd be one huge flower. Uh, giant white seeded sunflower. And these are all from Baker Creek. 
these two are from, well this one is from Mary's Heirloom Seeds and I have two packs for some reason. I'm not sure how I ended up with two unless they were one of the free seeds that she gets. It's the Lemon Queen Sunflower. So I have two packs of those and um, we'll see what they're like. I think they're a nice bright uh, lemony yellow. <laughs> Uh, then I also, these are not sunflower, but this is from Mary's Heirloom Seeds as well. It's a butterfly garden mix. And my husband is a photographer and he wants to, he's going to be the one more in charge of planting the flowers, um, planting the flower gardens. He wants to do, um, of course photography with all the flowers, but also he wants hummingbirds, uh, to come around. We used to go visit a place in another small town a little ways from here and this guy put up hummingbird feeders just all over the place and so he let people come onto his property and we could just go and watch all the hummingbirds and it was really cool there's just you know dozens upon dozens of hummingbirds flitting around so we kind of want to have that here too and uh, that'll be really neat okay the other the next up for flowers is poppies so these first three are really, well, first two, I guess, are really old. I don't know how viable they are. This is the Iceland Poppy, Better Homes and Gardens, from 1996. So I doubt very much that we'll get anything from those. Just a red poppy. I don't know where I picked this up. Bentley Seeds. Uh, I got this from Baker Creek, Rainbow Mix, California. And I got it... Um, in 2020, and these other ones, I just, I couldn't wait to get these. They were out of stock when I went to order them one time, and so got notification that they came in, and so I n snatched them up, and this was from this year, Mother of Pearl. Look at those beautiful colors, and kind of a double layer there. Isn't that pretty? Love it. Can't wait to see those growing. Um, and here's an even more layered one, Pandora. Beautiful colors there. And then a, just a frilly one, Frosted Salmon. Gorgeous. And then this one is really fun. Look at that. The Black Swan. Gorgeous. Can't wait to have those growing out uh, near our pond. Marshy area right now. <laughs> so this is a group of seeds when I was at the homesteading convention that Doug and Stacy from Off Grid with Doug and Stacy Stacy put on. Uh, we went out there in 2019. I've talked about it in the other seed stash videos that I did. But Baker Creek Seeds had donated some huge, you know, envelope, mailing envelope size uh, envelopes with just tons of seeds inside and so these next two types that I'm showing here were all in the that package that I that I won. So this is a Zinnia Cherry Queen. Very pretty zinnias and you know one pack I don't know how many seeds it has minimum 100 seeds and so I have this one and then I have five others. <laughs> I have six of these. All the same. I don't know. That's a lot. A lot to plant, even to sell. That's, that's a lot to do with, so maybe I'll uh, see about giving some of these away. The next one I also got in that pack, and this is um, something I'll grow maybe for us. My husband's not too keen on quinoa. On quinoa. But uh, I might grow it to see if the chickens will like it. Like it, But it's the cherry vanilla quinoa. Focus. There we go. And in that pack from Baker Creek, I got three of them. Minimum 150 seeds in each pack. But they grow three to five feet, uh, smothered in frothy masses, masses of cream to pink flower heads. So even if you don't get it for, or grow it for the quinoa, it still looks like it's going to be pretty. So that'll be fun to have growing, and even if the chickens don't like it, the birds, wild birds, will surely love it. So, oh, and here's a picture of it that I cut out from the catalog. 
So that's kind of neat. All right. Next are some random flowers, some of which I've had for a while. I uh, just have some marigold seeds that I plucked from a marigold I grew. This is um, from Baker Creek and it's rock soapwort. And I didn't have much luck growing this at my old place, so I'm going to try again here. I think I can let's see about growing it uh, along the, the creek. Anyway, it can be a fine, it's I don't know. Anyway, my intent with this is that soapwort um, actually has, if you like mix the leaves and stuff or the flowers with in water, it can actually create a soapy substance. And it's not ever going to create like a bar of soap, but it could create a liquid soap that you could use for washing your hands and such. So I wanted to try that, so I got some of this back in 2016. So we'll see if the seeds are still viable. This is really old. I don't know where I got it. Chinese lantern. Um, 2002. Let's see. Some really other old ones. This is from Honey Nut Cheerios. Cosmos. Sensation Mix. A couple of really old forget-me-nots. Very pretty. Be a nice ground cover near uh, the creek and throughout the food forest, perhaps. And then baby's breath, always good for flower arrangements. If I ever did flower arrangements, I have a couple zinnia here. This was from 2012. They're not my favorite flower, but my husband likes them. I don't know what this is from. For imprint, so it was a freebie given away by a local company, I think, or one of those, imp you know, imprint companies. Okay, seeds of change seeds. I got these a long time ago, 2009, and in my other videos I mentioned them. I don't know if I got them for free or if I got them for a really good price, um, but they were certified organic, and so they were getting their name out there. We have a zinnia. Uh, pastel Dreams. These are really cool looking. Celosia. Burgundy. Supercrest. I think these are really cool looking and I hope these seeds are still viable because I would love to have some some uh, Celosia hanging around. Here's a pretty marigold pinwheel. And then from Burpee I have a bunch of seeds. I don't know if I ordered these or if I got them from someone else. They're from 1997. I doubt I would have ordered these because um, <clears throat> that was from back when I was in college still and I would have had no reason to have these. So I probably picked them up from my grandparents or something. Um, just a marigold. There's no picture to go with these. Happy Days Yellow. Aster Fireworks Mixed. Aster Galaxy Mix. And a couple Cosmos bright lights, bright lights mixed. So no idea if those are still viable, but I like to give them a chance. All right, another old one, Shasta Daisy, Alaska. I love Shasta Daisies. I love to see a meadow filled with white flowers. Catchfly, none so pretty. Has a sticky stem that captures small insects. Interesting. It'd be a nice uh, thing to catch bugs around here. And then a Coreopsis double sunburst. Another old one, 1996. Most of these flower seeds are pretty old. I have a couple Delphinium here, Pacific Giant, both of them. One from Better Homes and Gardens and the other from Lily Miller. Gallardia, my husband likes these as well. Isn't that uh, Gallardia another name for Echinacea? Maybe not. Because I'm seeing Coneflower as a name for Echinacea. 
Anyway, Marigold Sierra Formula Mix. This is a really fun, full, frilly Marigold from Baker Creek. I got that in 2016. And then a couple other flowers. I got two Adoratum Mixed. These might have been a free seed. I don't know. I don't remember ordering these. 2019, maybe they were even in that, they could have been in that uh, Baker Creek package that I won at the convention. And this other one I know I ordered. It's a Tansy and it helps repels insects. Um, it's fern-like. Grows to four feet, aromatic leaves with a fragrance reminiscent of camphor and rosemary. They protract, uh, produce heads of attractive yellow button-like flowers, interesting when grown at the back of an herb border. Dried tansy has to, historically been used to repel insects like moths and ants. Holy cow! I need that. We have ants all over. I guess I'm going to have to plant these. <laughs> the plant also yields a traditional green dye, so that should be fun. I was talking about the sunflower seeds that you can dye purple and um, talking about seeing about for, here's the bloom of the tansy, seeing about dyeing for soap. But I also want to start um, dyeing my own wool yarn. So I think that this could be a nice green dye for doing that with. Okay, just a few more flowers and then we'll get on to the herbs. Here's a echinacea, green twister. I saw this on Baker Creek and I was like, that's so pretty. I love it. So I had to get some. Then Calendula Pacific Beauty Mixed from Baker Creek. We have a lot of Calendula planted around here from the previous owners. So um, I guess I have more to plant, but there are so many seedlings coming up from the ones that were planted here before. Uh, Snapdragons, one of my favorite plants, my favorite flowers from growing up because when you pop off the flower, you can pinch the little cheeks, is what I call them, and its mouth opens up. But I love snapdragons, and this is a very pretty one called the Apple Blossom, and I love the colors of that. And it's an old-fashioned snapdragon. Here's an English Daisy, double-flowered mix from um, Baker Creek. I don't know what makes that difference different. Petite double daisies, about an inch across, in reds, pinks, and pure white. Was often planted to add a pop of color in old-fashioned lawns. Actually, I kind of remember seeing that in some lawns growing up. Hmm. Carnation, the Chabot de Picote, Picote Fantasy Mix. I love carnations. My grandma had a nickname for me my name is Carrie, she would call me Carrie Nation. So carnations kind of became a favorite flower of mine just because of that nickname from my grandma. <laughs> All right, some herbs. We have here, um, I, I had gotten a, uh, one of those kits from um, those, my days of, of prepping and you know you get these big bins of, of seeds you know so you'd have seeds for a year I forget the term that they used for it back then but uh, so I got a bunch of I got one of those back in 2012 and um, this is the parsley dark green Italian I personally don't care for bar parsley um, much like cilantro I feel it has a bitter taste I don't like cilantro either I'm one of those weird ones I know Okay, we have Stinging Nettle, and I only got this, uh, well, it is a perennial and it is edible, um, and that's about the only reason I got it, because I remember getting stung by nettles when I was a kid. <laughs> I got a catnip. We have five cats now, so I'm sure they'll love it, although you never know. We used to have a cat quite a few years ago, and uh, about 12 years ago. And she didn't like catnip. I got like catnip toys for her and she didn't play with them or anything. So I don't know what was wrong with her. <laughs> she was an awesome cat, but still. Here's some plantain, which at my old house we had some plantain growing. And here I haven't found any plantain. So definitely want to have that. I, if you're going to have weeds, it might as, well, might as well be something like plantain. 
because there's many benefits from this. Um, I believe it's edible, but it's also, maybe not edible, but it is medicinal. I've heard if you chew the leaves on it and stick it on like a bee sting, um, it'll help soothe it. From Mary's Heirloom Seeds, I got some Borage to be a beneficial insect attracting plant for my food forest. I love chamomile tea. And I got two different kinds here from Baker Creek. One is the German and one is the Zloty or Zloty mix. Zloty Lan, which is a Polish variety. Wonderful aroma used to make teas. The German chamomile, beautiful small flowers, make a relaxing tea with a sweet fruity fragrance. So um, I want to make my own teas and so definitely want to have some chamomile on hand especially since it's a nice relaxing tea for bedtime in the evening and whatnot. Okay, one of these I got as a free gift. The other one I ordered, but this is Lemon Bee Balm. Two packs of that. And here's a Lemon Catnip. We had the catnip before. This is Lemon Catnip, also by Baker Creek. And don't confuse the Lemon Catnip and the Lemon Bee Balm with lemon balm <laughs> which I love lemon balm and lavender together in a tea if you haven't tried it you should I have small little bags in my Etsy store um, sweetonionstitchery.com lemon lavender tea is both relaxing and refreshing at the same time it's so good all right some dill I've saved my own that I planted but I also have some left over from what I planted and this is um, a bouquet dill and I love pickling my own pickles, and of course we use dill for that. Okay, I have some sweet marjoram. All of, all of the rest of these are Baker Creek. Some rosemary. Vulgari oregano. Weak, weak, Greek dwarf. <laughs> Greek dwarf basil. <laughs> You try saying that fast. Persian basil. A large Italian basil from that uh, set, that kit that I got, the a year in a box. And then I have common chives, of which there's already quite a bit planted on the property in the no-till garden. And then also some Chinese chives. And I forget what made these different I guess it has a delicate garlic flavor instead of an onion flavor. I don't know, but I uh, thought I'd give those a try too. So those are my, my flowers and my herb seeds. That's pretty much the extent of all the seeds that I have. So uh, thanks for joining me and I love to watch seed videos myself, seed stash videos. Love to see what's out there that's maybe I haven't heard of before and maybe I want to try. So. Anyway, thanks for joining me, and happy gardening. Bye.